you cannot live in your house. I said, this is our home and where we're going to live. And he said, I don't know. This right here is Mount Messenger, an untouched native haven nestled in the heart of North Taranaki. Tony and Debbie Pascoe have watched over this territory for a combined total of 90 years from their home in the valley on the edge of the mountain. Uninterrupted by the threat of development and industry, Mount Messenger remains one of the most pure, unscathed, tranquil environments in New Zealand. A place where the native ecosystem has flourished for millions of years. But in recent times, the unthinkable has happened. And now an imminent threat hangs over the Pasco's idyllic paradise. By the seemingly unstoppable force of government sanctioned greed, all of this may soon become a highway. In this documentary, we'll meet Tony and Debbie Pasco as we join them on what could be one of their last walks ever through their home valley. I'm Tony Pascoe, I'm 61 years old, I've lived in this valley and in this home all my life. I met Debbie, my wife, just over 30 years ago. In 2017, on the 1st of September, announced through the bypass in Mount Messenger is going to come down through this valley, which we highly disagree with because there's going to be over 100 acres of native bush destroyed as well as two crystal clear natural waterways. Because of this bypass, supposed bypass going through our home, through our valley, it is devastating to us to think it's going to happen to absolutely devastate such a beautiful place. We've got a pretty tight community that um, is supporting us very greatly. We want to stay here for the rest of our lives and we want our next generations and all the generations after that to know how beautiful and natural and clean this valley and this area is. Back in the heart of our valley, it is just so picturesque. We've got a beautiful, beautiful clear waterway. It's clean as clean as you can get. The tranquility of back here is just unbelievable. It is so pure. It clears your mind. It is peaceful. There's so many birds living back in here and they're happy. They survive. It is unbelievable. At night time, if you come back here, the kiwis are calling. The mortbawks are calling. And I've been back here at four o'clock in the morning and the long-tailed cuckoo is calling to another one way down the valley. You can see the eels in the creek. There's a pond back over here further. We counted nine crayfish that were just living in their own world, not disturbed. The food in here is abundance for everything to survive. And if this proposed road goes through, this will all be destroyed. The 
ancient forest that's in here and this beautiful, beautiful clean water will be gone. The life in here will not survive. The feeling in here to us and the people who are brought back here, they feel at peace. It's very peaceful. Your well-being is just enhanced. I get pretty emotional about it because I've lived it all my life. I've come back here when things have been really bad and I've felt so much better. So this is very, very special to us and a lot of other people. This is home to 23 or more native species of birds, nine of which are endangered. We've got the kiwi, there's lots of kiwis breeding in here. And we've got bats in here, the long-tailed bat. It is so exciting to come back here and see the bellbird, the tui. But then you've got your little grey warbler. And because of the so many insects in here and so much life, of so many different varieties of, of native trees. A lady came up here a while ago, she said to me, every native tree is in this valley I use for my Maori medicine that is undisturbed, it is clean and crystal because there's no human intervention. It stays beautifully and clean and pure. And all the springs all the way down through the valley and all through the wetlands, they breathe, they're undisturbed. It is so unique in a, in a valley like this because it's close to civilization and a main road, and yet it's like it's 100 miles away because you cannot hear the road. It is not disturbed by a modern world. One of the colleges actually said to us, they renamed this valley Bat Alley. So many bats lived in here in their own environment. And that's very special to us because um, they're very endangered. It's something that people just don't see, but they're in this valley. We need to protect them. <sighs> Death to the creatures who happened here first. Death to the innocent, endemic at birth. Build on their dwellings, knock down their trees. Plow fields to kill them, pollute their vast seas. When they're endangered or extinct has been, they'll promptly be missed like the poor thylacines. The rata's grown on the pungas here. Over this last summer, they were just so full of flour. The pigeons, they were that fat, they were struggling to fly. It was just so alive. There was just so much food in here, so much fruit on these trees. It was one of those summers and everything was just thriving. And the water never dries up in here. The springs never dry up in here. To pipe it, track it, pipe it, put three roads in here, it'll just, just be devastating. It'll just be catastrophic of the damage it will do to this natural world in here. And I think a lot of people can't get their head around it because it's how much do we have to destroy? In here, the fog gets that thick, you can't see 30, 40 feet in front of you. When we have frost in here for four or five or six or eight days on end, it gets down to minus eight, minus nine. The frost stays up and sticks up in the dirt all day. They make a very slippery road, a dangerous road, a very wet road. It's people's lives that I'm worried about, very worried about. There's probably so many things in here we don't know about. Like if on the tops of these trees, what different insects, what different spiders, native spiders, that hasn't really been explored yet. Back in here that's, that's never been milled, never been logged. There's six and eight hundred year old trees, they could be older. There's massive ratas, there's massive rimus, massive kaikateas, massive matais back in the galley further that only survive because man hasn't been in here to destroy it. That alone has got a huge potential of New Zealand being clean and green and pure and looking after our environment. We can't destroy it in our generations because it won't be here for the next generations of young people coming through that can study all this and, and, and be happy about living amongst and leaving it to its natural beauty. We live in Ahatiti, a place in New Zealand, nestled among the flora, native to this land. 
with ridges reaching to the sky, covered with native trees. Along the valley floors, it is plain to see. Rivers running through the land, heading for the sea. Nestled amongst the trees, in the gentle breeze, native birds singing, happy as can be. Further back the valley, you may even see a wild pig rooting underneath the trees. It is these special treasures that we hold so dear and why we are so grateful that we can be here.